Okay, so uh, welcome, welcome to uh, the ePortfolio continuation class. Uh, this month we've been discussing ePortfolios. We've got one more session tomorrow. And then next month we're going to be discussing wikis. So this is Nellie Deutsch, and the course is Learn to Flip and Blend Your Class, or Learn to Blend and Flip. But the idea is teaching with technology. So let's get started with um, this session. Right. So this session is about education and work. And we're going to be going through documenting and reflecting on your experiences and the skills that you develop as an educator and someone who works. Now, it doesn't have to be education, it could be anything. But the idea is that we are learning and learning and developing skills wherever we are, at whatever job, and sharing what we learn. So, actually, teachers, and not only teachers, are doing this. All right, so let's get started. We'll be discussing education, documenting education, reflecting on our educational skills, skills that we develop as we learn through courses, and the courses may be formal, university courses or courses with credit, courses for degrees, and informal courses, and informal courses or courses that we take that do not have certificates, or if they do have certificates, the certificates are not awarded by accredited universities or schools. They could be accredited by a teacher who happens to uh, provide these courses, or organizations, private or um, non-for-profit organizations that provide these courses. In addition, we're going to uh, talk about work, documenting whatever work you do, and reflecting on your work and the skills that you develop. So it's about your experience on the job or through formal and informal courses that you take, which is your education, and the skills that you develop as a result. So let's take a look at education and the academic work, which means that it's formal and documenting academic work. Now, what does this consist of? Well, it consists of papers. Now, they don't only have to be outstanding, but if you have over 200 or so papers, you want to maybe choose, but you don't have to because it's all online. And this means that you can add every paper that you have written, and you should be proud of whatever papers or research that you have done. So it's about the papers, your reports of the results, and presentations of the surveys or essays or uh, papers that you've done. In addition, reflecting on the experiences that you encounter in the research and the learning. Now, this is really going into details. It becomes like a personal journal of the process and your development as a researcher, a writer, and so on. It's about experiential learning activities, which means that it's whatever process you go through through internship, research. Now, this could be volunteer or paid. Service learning, which is, if you're a teacher, it's the courses that you take after you become a teacher, along with your duties on the job. Now, when I say job, I mean the roles you take as an academic learner which means that you should volunteer as much as you can, because the more you volunteer, the more you do 
uh, the more impressive your e-portfolio will be. So feel free to add everything and anything that you do in order to uh, get from A to Z, from one point of your education to another, regardless of the degree that you get at the end. It's also about applications when you apply and you write essays for academic volunteer paid or other conferences or positions, roles, because positions usually uh, go with money and roles do not. You might not be paid. But don't think that because you're not getting paid for whatever role you do that it's not part of your e-portfolio. It is part of your e-portfolio because you're learning from whatever role you have in the school that you study in. It's also your current resume. You have to keep up your resume and update it all the time. And it's online, which makes it really easy. And your personal statements. And these could change as an undergrad when you start university. This is your personal learning as well as your education statements for graduate, professional, and professional school applications. So undergrad, your graduate, MA, and PhD, and um, post-PhD. And you might consider doing that if you haven't already. And video files. Always document what you do and the process, of course, reflecting on it, because these videos are so easy to add to your e-portfolio. And of course, pictures and graphics. Take a lot of photos of the conferences that you give. Wherever you give a conference, whether it's face-to-face -face or online, make sure that you add the pictures and the graphics. All right, let's take a look at the courses and documenting these courses, the courses that you take. Well, make a list. And of course, this is a work in progress. I mentioned this last time. So uh, it's going to change. You're going to be adding to your e-portfolio. It's great to start and continue it. So keep that in mind. You don't finish it. It doesn't finish until we finish. So a list of formal and informal courses that you've taken both online and face-to-face. -face, every single course. Now, if you've given courses, it's the same thing. You write down each of the courses that you have given. Even if nobody turned up, it's still a course and you can still reflect. Okay, I'm talking about a live class, for example. Face to face, somebody always turns up. But online, it's a lot easier because it's documented right away. And of course, your reflections on the courses, both online and face to face. Documenting the content of the course. If you've created a PowerPoint presentation, talk about that. If it's on Google Drive, it makes it so easy to present by yourself, either before the actual live class or face-to-face -face class, or after. And then you can reflect on your experiences through audio and video. And also the video tutorials that you've developed, and you should develop a lot of video tutorials, even those that you share with your if you're taking a course with your instructor, put that, because that's a learning experience for others. And the idea, of course, is not only to impress someone with your resume or e-portfolio, but it's also to help others learn from your experiences. So if something didn't work and you shared it with your instructor in an e-video, then others can certainly learn from it. So it's your video file of your performances. And performance doesn't mean success, it means the process. So mistakes go in there, problems that you have, and so on. And of course, pictures and graphics. Reflecting on your academic work. And this is a very important part. Because when you reflect, you're actually going over and describing what you had to do and how you felt about it. And it doesn't have to be the result. It could be the process. And it's not really criticizing. It's just sharing. Because nobody learns for criticism and it's not very pleasant. So try to keep things positive and don't be hard on yourself 
don't self-criticize and don't other criticize. That's really important, okay? Because being positive does help everyone, including yourself. So reflections of personal growth. What did you get out of it? These are personal, but they become professional. The conferences you have taken or the conferences where you presented. The photographs, make sure you take photographs, as I said before. Honors, awards, the badges that you got for taking, say, a Moodle course or any other courses. And scholarships, if you got a free course. If you were given a free course, that's something you should add to your reflections. Now, how do you feel about it? And if this comes after the fact, Try to remember how it felt. And if you don't remember how you felt at the time, because time passes, then think of how you feel now as a result of getting a scholarship. Certifications, of course, we got certificates and licenses, licensures that you got as a result. If you got a job promotion, if this helped you uh, move up the ladder, get a new role and so on. And of course, video of the performances. And I said, performance doesn't have to be good or bad, it's whatever. And of course, pictures and graphics. All right, so we'll stop here. If there are any questions, please add them to the chat so that um, we can move on to the next stage. And of course, the next stage is reflecting on work and reflecting. So let's get started with that. Okay, so I see there are no questions. Let's continue. So reflecting on work. Now work doesn't have to be paid work. It's any uh, kind of job where you provide service for someone else. Okay, with or without pay, getting paid. It could be volunteer work. And this is really important because it doesn't make sense how much money you make. That's not what it's about. Reflecting is a personal process. Now, this could be your travel experiences. Did you have to go anywhere to a conference? How was the travels? Did you meet any? I mean, all kinds of things that happened to you on the way. So take notes when you're on the plane. And if it was online class, if you had to go somewhere, the process of the online class, were there any uh, challenges involved and so on. Photographs, of course. You can take photos on the plane, you can take photos at the airport, the place you get to, everything. These are memorable and they are a way for you to connect with what happened and for others to learn along with you. So your work experience, the duties, what did you have to do, your the skills that you learned as a result. Of course, references, the people that were involved that could vouch for the fact that you were there and um, add some more information about it, very important. So get references, you can do this on LinkedIn, of course. LinkedIn has it set up, okay? So you might wanna do LinkedIn, let me add that to the chat. Okay, LinkedIn, for those of you not familiar with it. Uh, try to get an account, very important. You can make me friends there, I'll be happy to be your friend. And of course, certifications. If you got anything, make sure that you get a photo of it with your uh, cellular phone, okay, or a camera, and add that to your e-portfolio and your work reflection. And of course, video of performances. Take lots of videos. You can take videos of the conference and the classroom, whether it's an online or face-to-face -face class. Pictures and graphics are really great. If you can't do a video, you can put these together through Move Notes. Now, Move Notes, I'll add that in the chat so you can look that up. Move Notes, and we've talked about this in the course, Move Notes are really, really useful as a way to document and reflect. Okay, so next slide is a thank you. All right, so uh, this is it. This was uh, the information I wanted to provide you with. Now, this is a process. How did you feel? during the class or throughout the recording. This class is an example of what you will add to your ePortfolio. So every class that you take on WizIQ with me or with others, it's a class that you should be adding to your ePortfolio. So do that. So thank you very much, everybody. I'm glad you came 
And uh, if you're watching this recording, don't forget to reflect. Thank you.